Let's look at an integral inequality. Uh, what's interesting in this inequality is there is a pi for a function, differentiable function, in the interval from 0 to 1. If the function value at 0 is 0, let's prove that the square root of the function, if we take the integ integral from 0 to 1, is less than or equal to 1 over pi square. Now the integral, now the square, now is first the derivative. So we may wonder why there is a pi in this inequality. Well, let's prove it. First, let's remember, let's think about uh, all the functions. For example, we talk about all the C1 functions, which is differentiable uh, with first the derivative continuous in the interval from 0, 1 to positive 1. Let's just focus on this interval. Let's study all the functions, c1 function, in this integral. Let's study all the c1 functions in this interval. Well, we know any function in this class can be written as an trigonometric expansion in the form of a0 plus the summation of the a n sine m pi x here n from 1 to the infinity plus all the b n cosine m pi x again n from 1 to the infinity this is the regular Fourier series we can expand any continuous function into this series well, here fx not just a continuous function, it's actually a c1 function, cover all the coefficients. Well, it's easy to see that a0, that's just the integral from negative 1 to positive 1, the integral of fx divided by 2. Then the an is actually the integral from negative 1 to positive 1, fx multiplied with sine n pi x. Well, b n is given by the integral from negative 1 to positive 1 f x cosine n pi x. Not only we have this representation, we also have a so-called possible identity. The possible identity tell us if we do the square from negative 1 to positive 1 f square dx is given by one half of the a0 square plus the summation from 1 to infinity a n square plus b n square. This identity actually, uh, there's more to this identity. Essentially, it says from the interval from negative 1 to positive 1, we have a sequence of functions. The sequence of functions, including the constant, all the sine n pi x and all the cosine n pi x, they actually give a orthonormal basis up to a certain constant. We need to multiply a constant uh, to the sine n pi x and a constant cosine n pi x so that they actually form a basis uh, for all the square integral functions from the negative one to positive one. And the possible identity actually states, essentially states the fact that all these functions, the constants, all the sine, all the cosine, actually they are complete so that any square integrable function can be represented as a uh, summation of all the basic orthonormal bases. Okay, now let's come back to our problem. Our problem is f at 0 equals to 0, and our function actually is just a c1 function from 0 to 1. Now, let's extend the function by defining f at a negative x equals to negative fx so that fx becomes an odd function. It's an odd function
from the negative one to positive one. Now we have a nice function uh, defined on the entire interval from negative one to positive one. And it's an odd function so that we can apply this function, we can use Fourier series to this function. When we expand the function, now we have only the a n sine n pi x for n equals to 1 to, pos to positive infinity. What happens to a0? It becomes 0 because the integral of fx over the entire interval is 0. Um, the integral of fx with multiplying with all the cosine n pi x is also 0 from negative 1 to positive 1 because all the cosine they are even function while fx is an odd function. So their multiplication is again an odd function. Consequently, we have an expansion for fx over this interval. Now let's take the derivative. When we take the derivative, we have n times a n times pi times cosine n pi x. We can calculate f square, the integral of f square, by using the possible identity. So we have it's all the a n square, the summation of the a n square. We also calculate the derivative square. Its integral is the summation of n square, pi square, and a n square. Now it's obvious that the f square integral is less than or equal to pi square. Now of the its derivative, the integral of the square of its derivative. And we also we can see that the equality actually can be obtained when n equals to 1 which is equivalent to saying fx is just a sine n pi it's just a sine pi x so in the end we realize that the original integral from 0 to 1 f square that's just a one half now of the entire integral and so is its first derivative now we combine everything we have proved the initial inequality and we also realize that the equality actually can be obtained when fx equals to sine pi x. Okay, that's how we prove this inequality.